Last year wasn't a good year for the Chevrolet Bolt EV, or in fact, the Hyundai Kona EV. It's not that people weren't buying the compact hatchbacks or that dealers were unnecessarily price gouging. In fact, Chevrolet dealerships were working really hard to give heavy discounts on brand new 2019 and 2020 Bolt EVs. It was that both models were involved in safety recalls involving their battery packs, namely recalls to address a problem within the battery packs themselves that had resulted in a small number of both Chevrolet Bolt EVs and Hyundai Kona EVs spontaneously bursting into flames. Cars affected included 2017 through some, but not all, 2019 Chevrolet Bolt EVs and all model years of Kona EVs manufactured to that point. Fires involving the Kona EV happened first, then a few months later, the Bolt EV was also implicated. Initial investigations into the fires concluded that they occurred after the battery packs had charged to an indicated 100% full or had been driven a short distance after being fully charged. In the case of the Kona EVs, several fires occurred while the cars were plugged into charging stations, causing both companies and their chosen battery supplier LG Energy to issue recall notices. At first, both Chevrolet and Hyundai published safety notices to inform owners that they should not charge their cars beyond 90% state of charge, and in the case of the Chevrolet Bolt EV, advocated for customers to use what's known as Hilltop Reserve Mode, a feature on early Bolt EVs that allowed them to charge to only 90% full. Then, both companies began an extensive recall campaign, asking customers to visit their local dealerships to have software updates applied under warranty that would temporarily restrict their vehicle's maximum state of charge while a more permanent solution was found. Side note, some 2019 Bolt EVs and any Bolts made after that point are not affected by this recall since their battery packs were made in the United States on a brand new production line that opened there in 2019. Only battery packs made in Asia and shipped to the US for use in early first generation bolts are subject to this fault. Our new contributing presenter, Winter, who happened to own a Hyundai Kona at the time, had the recall performed on his Kona EV and immediately saw not only the range, but also the DC fast charging rate drop considerably. He spoke to Hyundai about it and was told that in the company's mind, the problem had been addressed and no further action was going to be taken on the situation. With the recall complete, the car, he was told, was now safe to park indoors again, and he was told he should expect that nothing more would be needed. He was frankly pretty furious as the faster quick charging and longer range was one of the major reasons he and his husband had chosen the Kona EV over, for instance, a Bolt EV in the first place. And now both of these features were gone forever if the company was beat to believed. After a short discussion, Winter called Hyundai again and told them he wanted the car taken back. After checking the local lemon law and finding it applied, even after nearly 15,000 miles of use, that's exactly what Hyundai did. But for other Kona owners, content with the changes originally brought about by the recall, all seemed fine, until a Kona EV in Korea, which had received the software update, was involved in a fire in exactly the same kind of circumstances as the original fires pre-update. Hyundai went back to the drawing board and eventually came to the conclusion that the Kona EV with the flawed batteries would have all battery packs replaced, a process that Hyundai has announced but not yet begun in earnest as far as we know. In the meantime, it issued a new software update that further restricts the maximum charge the car can accept and informed all owners who haven't had the second software update performed that they shouldn't park in garages or near any structures. A short while later, as owners of two Chevrolet Bolt EVs, myself and my wife had the updates applied to our cars, restricting our maximum range per charge slightly, but making no other noticeable difference in day-to-day -day driving. And I've done some long distance trips with the update. Some customers, unhappy with the restrictions on their vehicle's charging, decided to use their local lemon laws to ask Chevy to buy back their car, since it wasn't performing anymore as advertised under the original sales material. Some, like Winder with his Kona, were successful. Others haven't been. 
Since then, both Chevy and Hyundai have remained pretty quiet on the battery issue. Initial reports that the electrolyte in the Hyundai Kona EV's battery pack was at fault led Chevy to claim it didn't have the same fault as Hyundai as it used a different cell design. But then Hyundai surprised everyone earlier this year by announcing that the fault in its batteries lay in a production line defect that resulted in misaligned layers of the battery during manufacturing. Its batteries, made on a production line in Nanjing, China, were confirmed as having a mechanical defect, and as a consequence, that was when Hyundai announced it would recall all Kona EVs worldwide, replace faulty battery packs with new ones, as well as replace a small number of Korean market buses that had the same battery pack. Chevrolet, meanwhile, whose battery cells were made at LG Energy's Oshan facility in Korea, maintained at the time that it still believed its battery problems could be fixed with a simple software update, with the rollout of a final recall on the issue expected in early April. It is now late April, and while Chevrolet remained quiet for the entire month, we have just gotten word of the first official update to this battery problem. As reported earlier today by Reuters and confirmed via an update on Chevrolet's Bolt EV battery recall page, but not through any emails we've received yet, Chevrolet now says it has a procedure that it will be undertaking to rectify the problem and return customers' cars to full battery capacity. But it might include module replacement for some EVs. It reads, quote, General Motors is notifying owners of select 2017 through 2019 model year Chevrolet Bolt EVs that it has developed a remedy to complete the previously announced safety recall. As part of the service procedure, dealers will utilize GM-developed diagnostic tools to identify potential battery anomalies and replace battery module assemblies as necessary. The remedy will also include the installation of advanced onboard diagnostic software into these vehicles that among other things, has the ability to detect potential issues related to changes in battery module performance before problems can develop." End quote. According to the official statement, customers will be able to visit their dealerships from today, that's April 29th, to have the work carried out. It will be done free of charge, and Chevrolet says that when the procedure is completed, customers will again be able to charge their cars to 100%, which means they should get their range back. It's not clear at this point exactly what the new software will do, but according to the official recall notice, GM customers should expect to visit their dealerships for about an hour to have the work carried out. That work will start like this. First, GM will carry out diagnostics on each car to see if its battery modules are healthy. Then if no modules fail tests, it will install new onboard diagnostic software. It's not clear if this is a firmware upgrade, but I'm guessing that's the most likely path. But if your car fails diagnostics, then GM says it will provide a loaner vehicle for a while and replace faulty modules. That process could take several days or more, depending on parts availability. For owners of the Bolt EV, it's good to see that there is a proposed solution, albeit nearly a month late. And frankly, I personally would still be happier if GM offered the same battery replacement program as Hyundai is promising for the Kona EV. But the solution also suggests that the remedy isn't quite as clear-cut as Chevy had originally thought. And while it had originally hoped to deploy a software-only solution, it does point to a potential hardware fault with vehicle batteries. It also suggests that GM has learned a lot about its battery management system and is actively working to beef up its battery management on all of its Bolt and Bolt family vehicles. In fact, after it has carried out the immediate recall, the company says it will add the same new advanced software on all Bolts currently on the road and will be rolling out production 2022 Bolt EUV and Bolt EV with the new advanced software as standard from the factory. This recall should, I hope, also mean that affected Bolt EVs, which have a stop sale on them right now, will also be able to go back on sale post-recall. And that could mean some great used EV prices for those willing to look for a bargain. When this recall began, I maintained that we'd be keeping our Bolt EVs to see if the recall did indeed solve the issue, and I'm going to be eager to see how both our Bolt EVs, which have 56,000 and 90 plus thousand miles on the clock, and how Winter's Bolt EV, which just has 40,000 miles on the clock, will fare in the testing they will undergo at the dealership. While great little cars that have lost very little battery capacity, 
less than one kilowatt hour of capacity for both of our cars, and are ones that I hope will be in our family for many years since they suit our family's needs and offer cheap, unpretentious, cheerful motoring, I also need to be honest. I am not 100% convinced that this recall will 100% solve the problem, and with Ultium on the way in the near future, I am also cognizant that General Motors has other battery vehicle technology to focus on, more so than perfecting tech that is, frankly, several generations behind its latest new and shiny. Similarly, Winter for his part remains pretty dubious. The Chevrolet recall to him bears a striking resemblance to the original promises Hyundai made to him about the Kona EV recall, that the system will check for any bad cells or modules and monitor batteries for any issues moving forwards. But with every Kona now getting new battery packs, he can't help wonder if there's a solution based more on hope than engineering. Still, with Hyundai's example fresh in its mind, you would hope that Chevrolet wouldn't be retreading old ground. That said, I for one will be getting the recall done, and I will be reporting on it. One of our remits here at the channel is to report on life with cleaner, greener, safer and smarter vehicles. And that means living with them, and reporting on the good, the bad and the ugly. And living with a car for as long as is practical and sensible, not just swapping out the car for the latest new EV every few months just to get extra social media love. And so it'll be. Our bolts have been incredibly reliable, save for an ABS issue with my car, a 12 volt reset that we had to do after a failed rapid charging station, and each car developing random errors after the last software update that then mysteriously vanished as quickly as it appeared. Hopefully this new recall will do what it says, but like I say, watch this space. That's it for today. As always, thanks to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, Anonymous Freak, Regine Fellows, Gordon C, Paul Conway, Laura Sanborn, Anthony Coates, Denny Hyde, Sean Ueda, and Tazla in the Gong. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, and Ian. If you would like to join the ranks of wonderful supporters, you will find links below to Patreon, Bitcoin and Ko-fi. You can chat with the team and TE fans over at Discord. And if you'd like to buy some TE swag, just point yourself to our Redbubble store. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving. Mm -hmm.